Hi Seth, hope you're having a good day. Um, use video, video lesson. Uh, three things I want to talk about. If you have any questions at the end, let me know anything. Feel free to shoot a message over or a video over, and I'll be more than happy to take a look or uh, to answer your question. Um, and also, feel free to send something over so you can see how the uh, songs are coming along. Um, and that way, I can give you more uh, uh, more uh, specific advice uh, rather than like maybe some general uh, criticism or something like that. So the first thing is A minor pentatonic. Last week, um, I talked about the. Uh, the A minor pentatonic at the fifth fret, right? Five, eight, there we go. Five, eight, five, seven, five, seven, five, uh, seven, five, eight, five, eight. We talked about that last week. Let's build off of that. Um, what we're going to do is a three note sequence. So basically, when you're soloing or playing rock riffs, things like that, they're built in what are called sequence patterns. And if we practice the sequence patterns, then when we go to play the rock songs or do a solo or something like that, you've already practiced the hard part of said, said riff or solo. Um, first one I like to start off people is the one I just gave right here is the three note sequence. I'll go through real quick. I wrote down most of it, and I think you can probably infer the rest of the uh, the pattern to the uh, to the scale. If not, let me know, and I'll write the rest of it out for you. The first thing is five, eight, five. That's the first group. You go up three notes. You go back a note and start the whole pattern over again. So the first one is five, eight, five. You go back a note. You go back to that eight right there. Do three more ascending. Eight, five, seven. Go back a note, five, seven, five, right? Go back a note, seven, five, seven. Go back a note, five, seven, five. Go back a note, five, seven, five. Go back a note, go back a note, five, eight, five. Go back a note, eight, five, eight. One more time, five, eight. Five, you go back to the previous note you played, the eight. So the whole pattern over again. Three more notes up. Eight, five, seven. Don't worry about going back down the scale this week. Just practice this going forwards. And then next week what I'll do is I'll go over the, um, the descending uh, portion of the, uh, the sequence pattern. So practice that for me. <coughs> Next thing is number two, building off of the musical alphabet we talked about last week. So last week we talked about the musical alphabet, um, how they're, um, it's just a way for us to communicate the notes to another musician. Um, you have um, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D. Um, the easiest thing to remember is there's no B sharp, there is no E sharp. And every time you move up to a letter or a sharp in the musical alphabet, you descend or descend one fret on the guitar. So uh, we'll talk about that today. Um, so this this week, let's, let's practice doing the musical alphabet starting on E. So if I were doing the musical alphabet starting on E, it would be E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, and you go right back to A. Even though we're starting in the middle of the, of the, of the musical alphabet, we hit A, we go right back to the beginning again. So E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, a, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, and then to E. We've completed that whole musical alphabet starting on and ending on E. Now why is that important is because when you tune your guitar, when you tune the sixth string right here, you've tuned that to the note E, right? And if you go E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, every fret on the sixth string is just going up another letter or sharp in the musical alphabet. One more time. E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp. And then we get to E right here, that double dot, that's why the double dot is, is there, is the whole thing starts back over again. So let's go up to the E for right now in the sixth string, then back down. E, D sharp, or say that. E to D sharp, D, C sharp, C, B, A sharp, A, G sharp, G, F sharp, F, E. All right. Now, why is it important to know the names on the sixth string of the guitar? Is because let's start doing power chords. Um, there's rock chords. Um, if you know the name of the notes on the sixth string, you'll know what chord you're playing. So otherwise, it would just be you parrying um, me telling you to put your fingers here, but you wouldn't necessarily know what you're doing. Right. So I want you to practice that for me. And then the next thing is, um, I can't get, 
get no satisfaction, the next part from the Rolling Stones song. Um, I think last week we did the... And I think we did the verse. Well, do today is the pre-chorus, the part right before the chorus. The first chord is an E chord, and you should know that one's from Wild Thing. You go to a B7 chord. I've written it out here for you. I don't think we've done that chord yet. It's a four-fingered chord, right? It's just right here. So two on the on the um, on the fifth string, one on the on the fourth string, two on the third string. You skip the the, the B string, the second string. You play thing on there. You let it ring out open, and you catch the. Um, the F sharp on the second fret of the first string. It sounds like that. And I've also tapped it for you right here too. Same thing there. One and two and three and four and. The cool thing between, between the E and the B7 is that you have a common finger between the two. E, then you pivot off of that second finger and then you come back again. So when you switch to that chord, I would practice keeping that one finger in place when you're switching from the E to the B7 to A, so E, one and two and three and B7. E, A, and that leads you right into the chorus. So I want you to practice those three things for me. Like I said, feel free to shoot a message over of you playing through any of the previous sections. So that way I can see more specifically if you're having any issues or things that we can do better or things that are sounding awesome. Practice those for me, and if not, I will see you same time next week. Take care.